man, Creative Assembly is leaking like a sieve at the moment. There are so many things I'm finding out that are just absolutely fascinating. And it's from all these people that are really nice and really know their stuff and very, very clearly just deserve so much better than what they're getting from Creative Assembly and its executives. It's no wonder they are coming to me with this stuff and I'm so grateful that they trust me. So let's get into it. As the title says, Pharaoh was a Troy DLC. People have been speculating about this since Pharaoh was announced and now I can confirm it. I would, I, I trust implicitly the source that I am leaning on heavily for this, and they say the following. Pharaoh started off life as a DLC for Total War Troy, but then increased in scope and so became its own game with the saga development, but then they released it as a full-priced game. Bosses have divulged that CA has been in money trouble since April this year. This is when some bosses heard the initial talks of cancelling hyenas and price increases for DLCs and Pharaoh. <laughs> so this is... A clear example of mission creep and this is what CA Sophia has to deal with through no fault of their own. This is all because of hyenas. <laughs> See how much hyenas just fucks everything up. Corporate greed. And then I have another which I'm paraphrasing. During development Total War Pharaoh was developed as a saga game with the title but the saga title was dropped for release. So with that, we have an open and shut case. I want to emphasise that I really trust this source. It has served me well in the past, and I expect this to only be corroborated as time goes on. Alright, and now we're getting into another conversation that I recently had. Another long-form conversation with an XCA. And from that conversation, I got a few bullet points. I'm going to go through them. So, first of all, the success of Follow the Samurai as a standalone expansion was ostensibly what resulted in the idea of the Saga branding. So, with Follow the Samurai, you had a standalone, ex I think they call it an expandalone. So, Follow the Samurai kind of harkened back to the classic expansions of old, of the early 2000s, the golden period of PC gaming. You know, like Yuri's Revenge, uh, even the ones from Total War, like Barbarian Invasion and Kingdoms. So, it was a lot more like that. You wouldn't call Follow the Samurai a DLC. It was a proper expansion and it was a standalone. Like uh, the Conqueror's expansion for Age of Empires 2. And what does something like, say, Yuri's Revenge and Follow the Samurai have in common? They are both derivative, they are both improvements, and they are both amazing, and they both sold. They were a success. So CA obviously wanted to do more of this. So... That showed them that it's possible to make a derivative, a close derivative, off of an existing game and by leaning heavily on changing the aesthetics while reusing existing assets, it's possible to have something that you can bring to market and sell at like 20 or 30 or 40 quid, so about half of what the cost of a base game is. The Saga branding was retroactively applied to Fall the Samurai which this developer believes was the inception of the Saga brand experiment. And what made this interesting to me is that this developer didn't even know that the Saga branding had been retroactively applied to Follow the Samurai. It was their hypothesis that I confirmed for them, basically. <laughs> it's the smoking gun. The ultimate test of a hypothesis is if it can make predictions, and <laughs> this... You'll have to just take my word on it that this happened. It, it absolutely did. And there you go, that, that tells you everything you need to know. Next up, Troy being sold to Epic instead of normally retailed indicated a low trust in the Saga brand. And this might be due to the failure of the original Saga, Thrones of Britannia. And I can also say that I've had a conversation with a completely different XCA that estimated... Troy was sold to Epic for, for between 5 and 10 million. Man, I just, I've got so many conversations I've had and so much that I can lay out. It's fun being able to just summon this at point of need. It's like magic. So 5 to 10 million, so it was a success, but only because of a Black Swan event type thing. The fact that Epic was willing to buy Troy made it a success, but that was not possible with Pharaoh. It didn't happen again, for whatever reason. But this is important because it means that CA didn't expect Troy to succeed normally. So they went for that deal with Epic. So they, that suggests they had low trust in the Saga brand going into Pharaoh. 
Next up, Hyena's impending failure was an incentive to double down on Pharaoh and put more into the game and raise the price on top of the previous incentive to abandon the Saga Brandon. And I want to emphasise, this developer has no connection to the other one. This is a completely independent source that hasn't been primed or coached whatsoever. So this is two different X or current CA arriving at the same conclusion concordantly. Hyena's impending failure was an incentive to double down on Pharaoh and put more into the game and raise the price. So they invested a little bit more money and time into it and they put the price up and they stripped away the Saga branding. And then I had another conversation with a completely different source and they said to me, paraphrasing I think, that game was on the fucking cheap as well. That was another done mostly by market and budget kind of game because that was their experimentation into Sagas. About 10 people working on that at most and that was in reference of course to Thrones of Britannia. And the inception of Thrones of Britannia is interesting. That was apparently the creative vision of Jack Lusted, who was a modder from Total War Center. He was behind a lot of quite popular mods, or he had his hand in quite a lot of popular mods, and it seems kind of like he was poached by CA. So he was one of the most successful modders from probably the golden period of modding for Total War, you know, Medieval 2. When in Rome 1 when there was all these mods being made and coming out and really making the most of these games. So Jack Lusseth stopped making mods, started leading sagas for Creative Assembly and sagas by their nature are really cheap, really small games that mostly reuse existing assets. And what does that remind you of? That sounds a lot like modding teams making mods for games that already exist. And it makes a hell of a lot of sense. Who knows the shortcuts involved with taking something that already exists and changing it as drastically as possible with very limited resources to create as different an experience as possible? Who are the experts at that? Modders? The, the good modders? The best modders? They are the foremost exponents of this craft, so it makes sense that CA would have a modder leading a project like this. It all just makes sense, all fits. So the similarities here are impossible to ignore and another thing that confirms this is the low cost. Not many people, not much money outlaid. And the way this was described to me is that in the CA studio, all the people working on Thrones of Britannia could pretty much just fit into the corner of an office around a desk or two. <laughs> so it's, it's clearly a really small you could even maybe say unambitious game. So it's low budget, low man hours, low resources, and it's supposed to be a stopgap between major tentpole releases. And with a project like that, there is an internal reason for why that gets greenlit, why the budget for that gets approved, but that is always going to be different from the external marketing reason. People are always going to ask, why is this game small and you can't answer we want to be cheap bastards <laughs> so the way they dress this up for the customers is to say it's a more focused point in time and history i think the, f the word flashpoint is even used so it's like a flashpoint in history that they get to focus on and that sounds appealing to people like we get to look at the Trojan War, or we get to look at pre-medieval Britain after the Vikings, around the time of the Vikings, or we get to look at Egypt during the Bronze Age collapse. So these are meant to be specific localised points in geography and history, but internally the reason all along is that we get to rely heavily on what we've got and not put a lot of resources into these and we get to sell them for like half the cost of a full game. So it's supposed to be highly profitable, it's supposed to find its audience. It's obviously understood that it's going to be a smaller audience than something like Rome 2 or Medieval 2 or Medieval 3 or Empire 2, but it's going to have its own unique audience and it's going to try and find that and then there's going to be DLCs for it and you're going to be able to raise the average spend per customer. So that was the idea, that was how it was surely pitched. And it just hasn't worked. They've been trying now for five years since Thorns of Britannia 2018. And it just hasn't worked. I already leaked the 45,000 copies sold. That was as of about five days ago. 
so it's surely not even hit 50,000. It's not gonna... It might never hit 100,000 copies sold. That is really bad, that is a massive failure. It's totally, it's a totally ignored game. And the reason people like me gave for shitting on Pharaoh all along through its marketing cycle, up until release, after release, they've now been confirmed, vindicated, because we've now had it confirmed by current and or former CA that Pharaoh used to be a DLC. It was a Troy DLC that got made into a saga that got sold as a full game. <laughs> That is shocking. And to make it even worse, this is the only time I know of a saga being made out of a saga. Because Thrones of Britannia was an Attila mod. Troy was a Warhammer mod. And when I say mod, I mean like a heavy duty mod. And by the way, I've sustained three years of constant harassment for basically claiming that Troy is a Warhammer clone. <laughs> oh my god. I've had a lot of talk of vindication over the past like month or two. But there's no possible greater vindication than literally being told by current CA that Troy is basically just a, mod a modified Warhammer. Chef's kiss. Fuck me, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You don't know what it means to me. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off track. So we've got Thrones being a mod of Attila. We've got Troy being a mod of Warhammer, and we've got Pharaoh being a mod of Troy. <laughs> and that goes some way to explaining why there is such unprecedented levels of apathy. And I'm really grateful for the internal confirmation. Anyway, I hope that was interesting. Uh, this is something that definitely fascinates me, and I would love to hear more from current or former CA on this, if they have anything more to add on to this, because this is an interesting subject. I've also heard that CA doesn't consider mods to be a competitor to them, which on the face of it might sound absurd because you could argue that for the past 10 years, CA have just been selling mods. You know, they just, they change one of the games that they have very slightly and then they sell it at full price or they make a DLC of something that would have just been a mod for Medieval 2. Think about it this way. How much more different is Troy to Pharaoh than base medieval 2 is to third age. <laughs> it's, a, it's surely easy to make the argument that third age is more of a development on medieval 2 than Pharaoh is on Troy. Do you see the problem here? It's like you're making a Lord of the Rings Total War game out of medieval 2 and then you've got CA making an Egypt game out of a Troy game, except they sell it to you. So modders make Lord of the Rings, branded Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, name your IP, mods, which are basically new games. I always sort of in my head considered Third Age to be its own game. <laughs> and that's never been more true than right now when you've got Pharaoh allegedly being its own game when it's really just a DLC for Troy. Which is what it started out as. <laughs> and then it had a bit of scope creep over the months or years. But it's now time for my final leak. And this one may actually be a bombshell for all the Warhammer fans. This really might be big, have big implications. But I have been told some people working on Total War Warhammer will also be made redundant and they will be outsourcing work on Total War Warhammer to CA Sophia because they are cheaper. <laughs> Obviously it's all up for consultation and they may change their mind so the numbers and roles being made redundant might not be 100% determined. Yeah, so there's a lot of people out there that have been clamouring for comments from C.A. Freeman or C.A. Evangelist and instead of actually giving them answers, they've just been banning them from the forums. Well, there you go, uh, doing their job for them at the moment, telling them what's going to be happening. Uh, don't know why they couldn't just do that. Would have been a lot easier, a lot less painful if they just said that was what was going to happen fucking months ago or weeks ago, you know? So pathetic, this whole thing. Uh, and also, to see out the video, I am gonna now lean on a really good video that was uploaded a few days ago. 
from Soul Games Inc. where he talks about this very subject and he takes the extreme hardline approach of a modder, an experienced modder that used to be on Total War Center and he was even a Total War Center staff member that had a lot of administrative duties and here's what he had to say about this whole situation with Pharaoh. Please don't copyright strike DMCA me, Soul Games Inc. I've had enough of that recently. Pretty please, while I use some highlights from your video. But you really should watch the whole thing if you like what you hear. Thanks everyone, see you next time then. Bye bye. Every single one of these saga titles on past engines prior to the change, which they bloody well did on purpose, you would have gotten each of these titles for free. How do I know this? Because they already exist. Medieval 2 already has a Thrones of Britannia. Medieval 2 already has a Troy. Medieval 2 already has a Pharaoh. Medieval 2 has Lord of the Rings. Medieval 2 has Dragon Age. Medieval 2 has World of Warcraft. Medieval 2 has all of these titles that Creative Assembly didn't see a penny for. And Warhammer 2 comes out and it's just Warhammer 1 with extra steps, but also still missing content <laughs> that they could add in DLC. And then Warhammer 3, again, is just Warhammer, but still missing content that they can add with DLC. I get pinged on Discord like, hey Soul, have you seen the latest like a uh, flop from Total War? Pharaoh is basically a mod. And I'm like, it's all a mod. All of it is a mod, Jimmy. All of it. There's mods there, there's mods get everywhere. Everything you've been buying for the last 10 to 15 years has been a paid mod, you f***ing sheep. If you think what I do has value and you want to support it, then check my Patreon page out. I do my best to give out perks, which includes monthly updates on what I've got planned and what I'm thinking about, my scheming. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington Paints, SJ Mage, Bador Nasser, and Desync was here. P.S. Rob got sacked.